Good morning, Pastor Dean here, and we welcome you to our Touchpoint, TCC Touchpoint midweek update and teaching. And uh, today we're privileged again to have Phyllis with us, and she's going to give part two or add on or what, however she wants to describe it. And we'll also have a visitor today, and Cheryl has stopped by to give moral support and prayer support. Hallelujah. <laughs> and so let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your life and thank you for your goodness. And we invite your spirit to open our hearts and that we might hear the voice of the Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. I just want to begin by sharing a quick scripture here. In James chapter 4, 13, I've been meditating on this for a few days. And James talking about uh, Christians engaging in business. And just, just a very basic thought. Come now, you who say today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a city and spend a year there and engage in business and make a profit. And so, you know, Christians, we use our mind, we use our 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 internal processing to make decisions and that's you know with our with our soul we work in the world we connect with the world but yet there's a higher thing that needs to be in in overall things in our life in verse 14 yet you do not yet you do not know know what your life will be like tomorrow you are just a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes away Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and also do this or that. But as it is, you boast in your arrogance, all such boasting is evil. And so this isn't just a rote thing where, okay, if the Lord wills, I'll do this and that. This is an internal humility before God. And so we humble ourselves before the Lord. We humble ourselves before the Lord and we surrender our future, our lives, our decisions to him. And there's something that happens that he's able to work greatly in our life. And that's just a fundamental thing, but yet it's by the Spirit that we do this. And so we're called to live humbly before God in all ways. And I just had a thought written down here. God knows the future. He can put us at the right place at the right time. Not only does he open doors that no one can shut, but he also places us before those doors. So we do not miss opportunities. In Proverbs 16, 9, a man's mind plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps and makes them sure. And so God is in our planning process. He's in our, the administration of our life. That's our job to administrate our life and to use whatever resources we have and our, you know the general call on our life to make our plans, but yet... When we surrender to the Lord, the Lord directs our step and he's working in the midst of all the processes that go on. And so we can go forward trusting that God is going to, going to be there and he will prosper what we put our hands to. So let's stay humble before God. Thank you. So I'm just going to turn this over now to Phyllis and have her share what's on her heart today. Okay, today I'm going to talk about honoring Holy Spirit. Let me read a familiar verse, Ephesians 4.30. And do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Remember, he has identified you as his own, guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. He has claimed us, joined himself to me, put his seal, another translation says, on those that have opened their heart to Jesus. Hebrews says it this way, he's not ashamed to be called our God. He will be with us through thick and thin, not demanding perfection, but expecting that our hearts will be open to him as his heart is to ours. That 
is what he expects. Let me read out of uh, Romans 8, 26 through 28. It's very, sometimes almost used as a cliche, but I want to think about it soberly today. And I'm going to read it from Amplified. So too the Holy Spirit comes to our aid and bears us up in our weaknesses, for we do not know what prayer to offer or how to offer it worthily as we ought, but the Spirit himself goes to meet our supplication and pleads in our behalf with unspeakable yearnings and groanings too deep for utterance. And he who searches the hearts of men knows what's in the mind of the Holy Spirit, what his intent is, because the Spirit intercedes and pleads before God in behalf of the saints, according to and in harmony with God's will. And then the familiar verse, we are assured and know that God being a partner in their labor at all things will work together and are fitting into a plan for good to those who love God and are called according to his design and purpose. So that's the assurance of that verse. Hearts completely open to him. Holy Spirit comes and prays for us, meets our prayer, and finishes it out perfectly in the will of God. And things dovetail and work out according to God's plan for us. Do not bring sorrow. Let me just remind us what brings sorrow to Holy Spirit. Um, I'm back in Ephesians 4. And I'm just going to read phrases from 17 on. Live no longer as the Gentiles, for they are hopelessly confused and their minds are full of darkness. Um, throw off your old sinful nature, your former way of life, lust and deception. Let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Stop telling lies. Don't sin by letting anger control you. Quit stealing. Work hard and so you can give generously. Don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement. Get rid of bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, slander, all types of evil behavior. Be kind, tender-hearted, forgiving, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. No sexual immorality, no obscene stories or foolish talk, or coarse joking or jesting. That's not for you. Don't be fooled by those who try to excuse these sins, for the anger of God will fall on all who disobey him. Live as people of light, and then again to the familiar verse, don't bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. He has identified you as his very own, completely identified with you. You know, <clears throat> we, I'm sure most of us have learned to stay away from that list that I just read. But Holy Spirit is very sensitive, and he wants a totally authentic, not glossed over, but authentic, down-to-the-core relationship for us with the Father. You know, there's a lot in our world that we just callously dismiss. But like I said, Holy Spirit is sensitive and he's grieved. I want to tell a little story that happened about two weeks ago. Um, in, in the cemetery near me, that means a lot to me. There's a little tiny, well, it was quite a large peony. And it was a, a heritage, you know, old, probably 85 years old, this peony. Somebody had put there many years ago. Okay, so now the young guy that's mowing a lot, he just mows right over it. And so I was really quite disturbed about this. <laughs> and I put a stake up by it. And, like, I think might have even put a little sign, don't mow here. And, well, he just took my stake and just threw it off to, I don't know what he did with it. I couldn't even find it. It was a big iron stake. And then he just mowed right over it again. And so I was up there looking for it. I'm going to try to 
do something to save it. And uh, I was looking in the grass and kind of muttering, you know. In fact, every time I would go by, I would comfort myself by muttering about this boy. He's just lazy and he just goes over and he doesn't take his time. And I and I would feel some kind of satisfaction <laughs> with that. And then, so I'm looking for this little peony and I can't find it. I'm looking in the grass. Oh my goodness, it must be completely gone. And then, and I'm muttering about this boy. And then, very quietly in my spirit, I heard, um, this is not love. You're not walking in love. And I said, what? What? What do you mean? Well, what should I do then? And then that answer just came so softly. Just let it go. Just let it go. <laughs> and I, I thought, I can just let it go. I can quit muttering about this boy. I can I can even stop trying to find this pony. I can just let it go. I can let it go. That's what would be walking in love. And so I was very lighthearted, and I turned to walk back to the car, and I just happened to look down. I wasn't thinking, oh, I did the right thing. Now I can find the peony. I wasn't thinking that at all. And there is the little peony, just a few inches high, still peeping out of the ground. And I was, you know, it wasn't that, okay, God rewarded me. I grudgingly let go and God rewarded me. No, it wasn't that. It was like God was communicating to me. And Holy Spirit, this meant so much to me that you were willing to let go of this so that your relationship with me would be um, unhindered. It meant a lot to me. That's what God was communicating to me. Just a little thing. See, it's the little things that put wedges. And then, uh, this is way back. Um, I gave another little example. Back in the 70s, you know, last week when I told you I was like a crazy woman, going to all these meetings, I was just intense, intent and intense. I wanted to hear God. I didn't want anybody in the way. I didn't care about any people or anything. I just didn't want to hear God, you know. And I, so I was in Walker. I had driven a long way. I'm in the armory where there's a um, cement floor, and I'm hearing, I'm going to hear Katina Nichols, and really, I wanted the worship to get over with. It was too long. I wanted to hear the word, and uh, so this woman sitting next to me, she's grinding, sliding her feet back and forth on this cement, and there's some gravel, you know, people are dragged in, and it's making a real racket, and it's a real distraction, and I'm just getting, ooh, I'm just getting irritated, you know? I want to hear the speaker. I can't concentrate. This is irritating me. And I really wanted to smack her. And then, um, <laughs> and then, you know what happened? The Katina Nichols, she's sensitive to Holy Spirit, evidently. And she's the speaker. And she said, okay, this is what Holy Spirit wants us to do. He wants me to stop right now. He wants us all to go to somebody and bless their feet. <laughs> <laughs> and so I thought, oh, Father, what a way that you work this out to take this hardness out of me, you know? And I just rushed to this lady, and I bet she thought I was half crazy. I mean, I just grabbed your feet, and I just caressed your feet, and I might have kissed them. I don't know. I was so happy, and all that went out of me, you know? It just left me. See, these little things built, build up unattended to these little attitudes they build up a hardness in us and um you know we can act sweet we can act sweet on the outside oh yes you know i love everybody and even do put our arm around somebody and act loving and that's not in our what's in our heart and um you know god is interested in our heart, not pretending religiously to be sweet. It's an offense to Holy Spirit when we lie. It's an offense to Holy Spirit when we lie and say we're sweet and we're not. If you think I'm exaggerating, think back to Ananias and Sapphira. That was a little. See, especially when there's a move of God, when there's a real penetration in the earth and a move of a visitation of God, things are more sensitive at that time and you think back to Ananias and Sapphira this wasn't so serious I mean they gave I mean so what they said it was everything they just wanted to be in on with the crowd that wasn't so bad you know they had a chance 
to come into the light and not grieve Holy Spirit and not lie to him. Peter said, is this really all? He was led by Holy Spirit to ask that. And I think it was to both of them. I know it was to Sapphira, but they had a chance on the spot. And they said, yes, yes, it's all. And the husband dropped dead. And they buried him before the wife even knew it. You remember the story? She came in. Is this really all? Yes. And you've lied to Holy Spirit. See, when we pretend something that's not real, it's like lying to him. It's serious. It grieves him. Um, okay, I'm going to talk a little bit about relationships. Scripture says, as much as lies in you, and I've always pondered that, as much as lies in you, live at peace with all people, all men. See, God sees situations um, of life, and he's not unreasonable. Sometimes your deepest desire is to live in peace with those that you're um, connected to. God sees your heart, and he has more mercy on you than you have on yourself. I want to say something. I'm going to talk about my mother and I in just a minute at the risk of being misunderstood. But sometimes there are claims on people's lives from childhood that rise up to dominate relationships. But God sees the heart, and he always gives an opportunity throughout life. He keeps giving opportunities to come into the light. But sometimes people can't let go of the security of their offense, and it uh, dominates. Dean, there's a bunch of writing came on here. Is that okay? Okay. Okay, we'll carry on. Um, okay, like I said, I'm going to talk about my mother for a minute and just understand it by the Spirit. We loved each other fiercely. We would do anything for each other, but we were like in a total standoff from the time I was probably <laughs> two years old. I don't know. Um, and that's all I'll, I'll say. I couldn't, okay, talking about the claims on her life. Her father died when she was three and she felt abandoned and she projected it over on God and everybody in her relationship, she would uh, make them responsible for making her feel loved when really she didn't feel loved by God. And she made tried to make me respond. She said she felt loved by my dad. But <laughs> no matter how hard I, I tried and I just get, did everything. No, she wasn't satisfied. And of course that made me just angry, you know. I couldn't satisfy her. And so um, so um It was, um, I won't go through our whole history, <laughs> but it, it was a few years ago, and she's 95 years old now, and I have taken care of her the last year just heroically, like nobody could. I mean, I was lifting her when I was frankly breaking my back or whatever, and she wouldn't really be happy completely. And uh, so uh, now it's getting... I, she's in the hospital, and I know that she's going to die, and I'm saying, God, I'm going to be so remorseful. I, I don't know what you're going to do to help me. When she dies, I'm going to think back. I should have done this. I should have done this differently. I should have been sweeter. I should have. Oh, I should have. I should have. Okay, she's in the hospital. I'm spending every day with her, and I'm tired. It's an hour and a half away from home. I finally go home one night at 930 I put up my feet, have a cup of tea, <laughs> and she got the nurses to get a phone rigged up for her that she could hear on. And she, it's dark in her room, okay? She's in the hospital. It's dark in her room. And she got, gets me on the phone, and she's saying, what is wrong with you? You are leaving me. You're completely in the dark. You didn't even come and help me get ready for bed. You didn't even give me a, a medicine. I said, Mom, I was there all day long. I just barely got home. I'm having a cup of tea. Well, I don't know what's wrong with you. Here I am, all by myself, alone, in the dark. And so um, I finally hung up, and, and then I thought. And the nurse said, I talked to the nurse. She said, 
it's your decision. And my cousin, who is a nurse, said, just go to sleep. You need to go to sleep. But I went to bed, but I couldn't go to sleep. I got up, got my clothes on, drug myself back the hour and a half to Grand Rapids, walked in her room, and listen, this is days away from her death. The first time in her life, the first time in my life, I should say, she said, I am so sorry. I am so sorry. I called you back here all this way. I was confused. I thought I was at home. I am so sorry. Listen, I didn't care. I fell over her bed and just laughed and laughed. I said, Mom, it is completely okay. I am so sorry. Listen, never had she said, I am so sorry, except I'm sorry, but if you wouldn't have done this, I wouldn't have done that. It's your fault. And never had she said, I'm wrong. I'm mixed up. I'm confused. Listen, that episode two days before she died affected her eternal not her eternal destiny. She would have gone to heaven. She loved God. But her relationship to God, I believe it with all my heart. If you don't believe it, think about this. I respect Bob Jones as a prophet. I think he was one of the greatest prophets. And in the 70s, before he died for good, <laughs> he went to heaven. And this is the question he heard. The only question he heard being asked of those in line before him, three people in line before him. One, a young, did you learn to love? It's the only thing that was asked. A young girl who had laid on her bed and died young had spent her life praying. And she was asked, did you learn to love? Yes, you can't lie. You know, you can't lie in front of God. It's, yes, I did. I learned to love. I prayed for others. And she was it right into God's heart, access, complete access to God, right into his heart, joyful. And then a big black lady, a, an evangelist, was next. Did you learn to love? Bob Jones is listening to this. Did you learn to love? Yes. Oh, yes, I learned to love. And all the angels were there. It helped her were worth it. And she, she was, if it was the truth, she was ushered right into God's heart. It's so much joyful celebration. And then a very old lady that had been crippled with arthritis and a gall of bitterness had entered into her heart. And she said, did you learn to love? And she waited. I, I could only love you. She said to God, I could only love you. I couldn't love people. And she entered heaven, but without that joyful entrance right into God's heart and that celebration of victory and rewards. See, God keeps giving us chances here just to take care of the things that we can cover up, but they're grieving Holy Spirit and they will have an eternal effect. Not that we won't go to heaven. I don't mean that. But there's joy. There is joy on this earth and forever with paying attention to what is making Holy Spirit happy and what's grieving him. Um, how about this? Do you believe this? John 4, 16, God is love and all who live who love, live in God, and God lives in them. Or how about this? This is kind of a compilation of translations. Um, first, first Corinthians 14, 1 Corinthians 14.1 Pursue, make love your greatest aim. Pursue it with all your heart, as if your life depended on it, because it does. And then James 4, 5, I'm reading from the Amplified. Do you suppose that the scripture is speaking to no purpose that says the spirit whom he, God, has caused to dwell in us yearns over us 
and he yearns for and he god yearns for the spirit to be welcome with a jealous love he's with us constantly he's he's constantly um uh, encouraging us to come clean to open up to let him deal with things that are we could cover over um you know Holy Spirit speaks softly, but it's very serious, and I don't want to harm him. You know, I've thought of that scripture in uh, Hebrews. I'm not sure exactly where it is, but it's that the word can cut through and divide, and that we're all laid bare before him in his word. And my prayer is that Holy Spirit just keeps uh, you know, keeps right with me and is very faithful to identify and point out things that are grievous to him and to heal me right to my core. Amen. Thank you, fellas. Praise God. He is with us and he is love. Isn't that wonderful? So I just want to uh, make a quick announcement here. On Sunday, Abby and her team are going to be leading us into worship. So let's come and expect to encounter the Lord together. Uh, Tim Pomp is going to give the message. And I actually made a mistake this week. It's hard to believe, I know, but... I sent out an email this morning, and I, I said Peter was going to give a message. <laughs> Somehow my calendar had that on there, and uh, so I got a message from him and from Tim <laughs> right away. <laughs> and so whatever, it was just kind of funny, but we got it organized. So Peter will be speaking in August, but <clears throat> let's come expecting to hear, to encounter God, to hear His voice, and to have people built up in their faith as Jesus is proclaimed. Amen. And I just want to mention again here for giving to TCC, we can mail our tithes and offerings to 10 Strike Community Church, P.O. Box 67, 10 Strike, Minnesota, 56683. Or we can you can go to the 10 com on the web. And in the upper right-hand corner, there's a donate icon. You can just follow those instructions. And we thank you for remembering the financial needs and also uh, giving toward the missions and different things. So praise God. Father, let's, let's just quickly pray. Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for fellowship. Thank you for life, Lord God, that you caused to live within us. You will never leave us. You will never forsake us. We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being with us. In Jesus' name, amen. So you have a great week, and we'll see you Sunday.